arguing about the church is not closed. <laughs> it is the building that is closed. Uh, but I believe many have realized that something was closed. <laughs> Amen. Let's appreciate the Lord one more time for his grace and his kindness. And let's celebrate Mama is with us today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Please, you can be seated. As we join those joining us. You know, it's very hard to really celebrate the Lord when you're in the house alone. People pretend about it, but they are dying to join. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. The early church, which was the first church, never said church is not a building. Daily they gathered. Amen. Glory to God. Um, in the first service, I shared on the abominations of gratitude. There are things that will try to seduce you, uh, telling you it is gratitude, telling you you are still grateful, but it is not gratitude. And you should stay away from them. If you want to go far in this vain life that God gives man, Stay far away from ingratitude. You can't be thankless and be important. <laughs> Stay away from being thankless. You can't be thankless and build a marriage. It never works. You can't be thankless and build a ministry. It doesn't work. There is no single ingrate I know today. That is a successful businessman. If you are an ingrate. The only gift men will give you after some time. Is rat poison. And it is not just rat poison. It is to kill the things. The rats. That are chewing your gratitude. And our slogan will continue. Lord, if there is any man that should be helped, if anybody is thinking of helping a man, let him think about Maurice Olo. Put your name there. Raise your hands and say, Lord, if any man is thinking of offering help, let him think of Maurice Olo. So you put your name there because I know you are not Maurice Olo. Put your name there. Be a man that people would be proud of helping. Be a man that people will be grateful to help. May nobody say one day, and I'll come to that, may no single soul that has ever helped you one day say it was in vain what I did for that man, what I did for that woman. May not even, you know, people don't know that even God regrets. May God not look at the blood of his son as a waste for having saved you. Because God regrets. The Bible says, and the Lord regretted that he had picked up Saul. God was saying, I wish I left this man with donkeys. I regret. Why did I bless this one? God regrets. May God never regret over your life. I didn't hear your amen. May the Lord never regret. Ladies and gentlemen, the amen after God has blessed them. God sits back and says, I made a mistake. I think not this one. I made a mistake. You know why? In gratitude. 
the abominations you must not commit in the name of trying to convince us you are thankful. Actually, any gratitude that you have to push and you have to really defend that you are grateful, you are not grateful because gratitude is felt. Gratitude must not be forced. Anytime you have to argue and say, but I am thankful, but I am grateful. Why can't you see my gratitude? Any gratitude you have to force men to see is not gratitude. You are thankless. Because when you are grateful, men see it. Gratitude cannot be acted. There are messages you send of thanksgiving and you are wondering, did the man see it? Because it was not thanksgiving. So it was not recognized. When people thank you, you feel it. Isn't it? Even if his gift is very little, you feel it when people are grateful. And when people are not grateful, even if they dance, you can also feel it. So any gratitude that you have to explain and say, but I am grateful, is in gratitude. <laughs> and if you are ungrateful, your gratuities will disappear in life. <laughs> if you are ungrateful, it's very dangerous. Now, allow me to take you to the next level. I gave you some two things over last week. If you are not there, I want to go to number three. And I say this gratitude that we have, I have some abominations I'll spare so that I don't sound negative. I will come back on it. So I said some things last week and I said gratitude has a voice. Gratitude is a language. It is a language that may never be spoken. You know when two people are in love, a number of times real love is never spoken. When people really love one another, the more people love each other, the closer they are to one another. That's why you can see lovers may not be talking and they just hold hands and they are walking. Because love is more than words. And when two people that love each other claim to love each other begin to quarrel and shout, there will be a distance. And they'll have to use a lot of words to convince us they are in love. Because love can be read even without you saying it. And there are things, there are avenues and platforms of gratitude that if you begin to operate on, they can stop a lot of things. I said one is our words, we can use our words to express our gratitude. That's, that's good, but it's a lower level. That's why I told you gratitude, you have to really use a lot of words, is a lower level. It's accepted, but you can begin from there, but it's a lower level. Then I said also that apart from the gratitude that we speak with our mouths, there is gratitude that we express. And I talked about body language. There is a way an old man receives a gift from you and you break down. You can tell the man is grateful. One of our cameramen came to my office this morning and he was telling me, you sent us to take food somewhere. And when that man received the food, the man, he said, man of God, the man was crying like a woman, not like a man. It was very emotional. And pastor wrote me a message and said, there, there is a way people say thank you without words that breaks everyone. Pastor is still shaking. When I say, he's still shaking his head because there is so gratitude. They saw a man that accepted you have helped me. It's not the first time I've sent you somewhere to take food, but this one broke you down. Sit down. Because the people are grateful. They didn't use words. They later sent me a message and they said, man of God, give us a Christian name for our son. I said, call the baby David Destiny. Because I was doing a study on David. I was telling mama yesterday, I have read some things about David I've never read before. And I said, at this moment, as I've been praying, Lord, what David knew that men don't know, reveal it to me. And God told me, tell her to name that child David Destiny. They were grateful. You see, 
They didn't give me anything. But I felt the gratitude. You know why people are breaking down in the social media and saying this has made me cry? They didn't hear them speaking, but they saw the gratitude. There's a way you claim you are telling your husband thank you. And he said, this ungrateful idiot, one day. Because <laughs> he can't feel it. He can't feel what you are saying. You are eating and you are roaring like a cat. You are not grateful. Gratitude can be felt. Raise your hands and help me pray this prayer one more time. Lord, if there is a man that is thinking of helping another man, let him think of Maurice Olo. I need help in my life. Send men to help me. I promise to be grateful. I want to live a grateful life in the name of Jesus. Lord, I will be grateful. Send men to help my life. So we say physical gestures. You can imagine people are not in that room. They didn't see that couple. Do you know that real love can be read from a Facebook picture? Do you know when you are forcing love, camera can take it? You didn't say anything. But the way... <laughs> be, listen, you see, you can't, you can't cheat nature. It's like sleep. When, you, when sleep is coming, you can't cheat nature. So are these things I'm speaking about? You can't, these are things you can't cheat when you and your wife are not in good terms, be sincere. Never cover it in a service. People have a way of finding out. Human beings, human beings will poke their nose where they are not needed. They will just pick that hapa. Because non-verbal communication is stronger than verbal communication. I told you of a house I went to and this man wanted to convince me he loves the wife and he was shouting, Honey, love, sweetie. So, as he was shouting, the wife came down and said, Are you calling someone? <laughs> he said, Honey, Apostle Lolo is here. I immediately picked. The woman had never been called by those names. The man wanted to impress me. So I picked it in not many words that this sweetie love honey does not live in this house. You can't cheat nature. We will find you out. If you are illiterate, we will know. Character is like pregnancy. It will soon be found out. The things you don't kill in the wilderness will stop you from entering the promised land. The things Poverty did not kill in your life. Prosperity will find them out. That's why it is good. You know, you, you can't act nice. It will catch up with you. You know, a brother is rich. You want to marry him at all costs. He's going to introduce you to the parents. You know you are wicked. And now you want to try acting humble. Nothing is as hard as acting humble. Because somewhere down the line, Arrogance will come out. Because arrogance, pride, ingratitude is an anointing you can't hide. When that anointing is on your life, it will manifest. It's like when a night runner, I've seen a night runner who is a cripple. <laughs> when, when you live long enough, you'll understand what I'm saying. It is an anointing that even though he has no feet, when the thing comes on him, he will throw himself. He will run. It's an anointing. So he's in gratitude. When you are thankless, there's a way even your dogs look at you. There is a disposition you come. Dogs cannot be the same. There's a way an ungrateful man... Let's continue. So I say... There's a body language. There's a way you'll say good morning. That the next thing your husband will ask you, are you okay? You know, one of the things married people are afraid of is, honey, are you okay? 
<laughs> it means you have been found out. You may hide it that uh, you know. <laughs> but sooner or later, we will revisit. Are you okay? I asked you, are you okay? There are things you can't hide. One of them is ingratitude. Lord, if there is any man thinking of who to bless. Lord, if there are men that have help, that are looking for a man to help, that is grateful, locate Maurice Olo. Number three. So we passed on that. I want to share on the tears of gratitude. The tears of gratitude. The tears. You know, you, the, our cameraman told me that that man, he didn't tell me what the man said. He said that man did not cry like a man. The, there's a sound that was coming from within. He, 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 he didn't say nothing, but he was grateful. He was grateful. The highest levels of gratitude cannot be expressed by words. There's a way a man is. <laughs> you know this man is grateful. Gratitude that makes you try to fetch tears. One of the things you can't act is crying. You want your wife to forgive you and you want to pretend you are crying. You can't act it, brother. If you did, you see? <laughs> okay. Okay. So, tears. Simply put, tears. The language of tears. You know, tears can convey a blessing and tears can, con can convey calamity. Because tears are the highest forms of emotions that men cannot touch. Tears are expressions of men's lives. That's why a man will say, you have refused to pay me my money, my blood, my sweat, and my tears. Tears are avenues, are tears are channels that carry human life. When you see a man's tears, you are seeing the side of his life you cannot pick physically. The language of tears. I will throw a few things and even tell you why some of the, for, the, the, the for, some forgiveness you, are, you sought in some places, you didn't get it. Because we know when men are truly sorry. We know when a woman is truly sorry. Look at this. When Absalom tried to overthrow his father from the throne and his father ran out of the city and left the throne for him, what killed Absalom were not the servants of David. What killed that young man were the tears of his father. There is something they say. A mother must not cry with your name. That your father must not cry with your name. I heard this. There are human beings on this earth that must not cry while mentioning your name. Let me add this. There are men, some I have met, that must not go to pray because of what you have done. Lord, if you are looking for a man, that can be helped and will say thank you. Look my way. Look the way of Maurice alone. I will be grateful. Give me gratitude the rest of my life. Keep me at the posture of gratitude. Don't let no car be so big I can't say thank you. Don't let no level of wealth be too much I can't say thank you. Don't let ministry become so great I forget the language of thank you Lord. And of thank you to men that have helped my life. Second Samuel 15, 30. Let me show you how Absalom. I'm, I'm going to narrow down this so they understand gratitude. Let, let's look at this. Second Samuel 15, verse number 30. So David went up. The son wanted to kill him. So David went up by the ascent of the Mount of Olives. And wept as he went up. And he had his head covered. 
and went barefoot. And all the people who were with him covered their heads and went up weeping as they went up. Why were they weeping? What the son attempted against him. The man covered his head. The man was barefoot. The man was weeping. The king, the head of state, was weeping. Those that were with him were weeping. The man was crying. The tears of the man were falling to the earth. And this is not just a man. For a man like David to cry with your name, you are gone. What killed Absalom were the tears of his father. Tears killed him. The grave was just a summary of what tears already did. There are men that are walking dead because of the tears that have been shed against them. Tears kill so mercilessly. When the three spears of Job went into the heart of the young man, you know how he died? When the three spears of Job went into his heart, sha, 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 he was still alive hanging between heaven and earth because the dad had gone up weeping and crying. Then the ten men that bore the arm of Job surrounded him and cut him mercilessly, killed him and threw him inside a pit and covered it. Tears did the real killing. The tears of his father killed him. There are men that will tell you, may your father not cry because of you. That may your mother not cry because of you. That may, may a supposed anointed man that has spent many days seeking the face of God, carries an anointing on his life, that you do something to him that takes him to the mountain to cry. May it not be your life. Father, as I live through this earth, may no anointed man declare a fast because of what I have done. Tears are dangerous. Tears are dangerous. There are tears that are cried against your life and no man can help you. And there are tears that men cry in remembrance of what you have done for them. And those tears become walls. Tears operate in two ways. Those tears become a memorial. There are tears that a parent cries because of what you have done. That becomes a memorial that death cannot bring down. They become a wall greater than electric fence. There are tears that some men cry with your name based on something you have done. That death cannot stand. And there are tears men cry and your grave opens before your time. Allow me to add this. We are in a generation that doesn't care. We are in a generation that can push an old woman in the bus. Fall down, they'll step on her. While she's weeping, they'll go their way. Because we think that has no repercussion. We are in a generation that is calling revelation religion seeking to bind men but when you live long enough you'll understand when tabitha died dorcas died i will run as fast as i can what raised dorcas from the dead were the tears of widows their tears god will see and the grave cannot accept a casket It was the tears of the widows that brought Peter to come and raise Dorcas. They are tears that call help. They are tears that call protection. They are tears a mother cries at 3 a.m. over her children. And no bullet can catch those children. And there are also tears that a mother can cry when it is raining. And her house is leaking. And she wakes up to bundle her things and sit in solitude, not able to sleep. But those tears become like daggers against her children. They are tears of pain. They are tears of abandonment. They are people who must not cry with your name. The mystery of tears and gratitude. I have made up my mind that there are men I don't want to hurt. And should I know they are hurting, I will do anything to ensure things are right. 
all married men, listen to me. The tears of a woman who labored with you in nothing. When you rise and build a house and kick her out and bring another woman to that house. When she labored and took loans, when there was no blanket on your buttocks, she covered you. And you kick her out and bring another one. And she weeps, crying like a senseless woman. You may do well for a while, but those tears are records. You will not escape. There are people who must not cry. A husband of your youth that married you nothing. Peradventure, a windfall falls for you. And you become bigger than him. And you make the man weep to the gates where elders are. Because the wife has become big. Madam, you will not end well. Because tears are more than watery eyes you see. You hear mothers saying things like, the father cried because of him. It will not end well. I pray for young ministers. May fathers not go to pray in tears because of your actions. I pray for young musicians. May your mentors not go to the mountain to cry because of what you have done. I pray God will preserve you. I pray on the platform of what you are learning now. That you chart the course of your life, the course of your ministry, the course of your destiny, the course of your children's lives, the course of your future. May you be a solid man that Satan is afraid to handle. Lord, if there is a man that should be helped, and men and women are looking for who to help, I pray let that man be Maurice Olo. Raise your hands and pray that prayer with me again. And say, Lord, if there is a man that needs to be helped, that man should help, let that man be Maurice Olo. Let that man be Maurice Olo. Save me from the tears of men who should not cry against me. Tears. I want to show you what tears can stop. And I want to show you what tears can do. I want to show you that there are mistakes you make. And when the axe is about to fall on you, your tear can drop to the ground and save you from going to the ground. There are tear drops that save you from going down and hold you up that you may go up. There are tear drops that can save you. A man is about to be finished. A great man. When you see his tears... When an old man, you are about to throw him out and you see his tears, you stop. Save us. Save our generation. Lord, give us the wisdom of the ancients. Teach us things that our hearts may be indicted to. Listen to this. Because this will help you. It may not make sense to you now. But it will make sense to you some days to come. There's a way a man can call you and he wants to fire you. And he looks at you. There are tears he sees. And he knows this is not acting. And he stops. If there is a man that you are giving a burden to help another man. Lord, let me be the man to be helped. Let me be that man that will be helped. Listen to this. Exodus 22, as I expound on this from verse 22. You can't separate emotions and brokenness. You can never. When you are truly grateful, you hear what that cameraman said. I'll still repeat. He said, what I had, the, the cry that came from that man was unusual. That's why there are things like the battle cry. There is a voice that comes out of a man and the heavens cannot be the same. There are sounds of battle cry. If there is a man that needs to be helped and Lord you are looking for people who can help a man let Maurice Olo's name come up. You didn't pray the prayer. Now look at this. 
You shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. He has no father. She has no husband. Don't afflict her. Don't try it. There are people that God leaves among men as traps. When you are about to run into trouble with the widow, know that you are about to run into a trap that can give you a premature casket. You shall not afflict any widow or any child. God, there's a way God defends a man that has no father. A girl that has no father. There's a way God fights for fatherless people. You're wondering how most of the great men cannot explain how they were fathered. Did you know that Bill Clinton's father died before he was born? And he was raised by a stepfather. And most of the times he sold groceries with the grandparents. And he rose to become the president of the United States of America. Do you want to understand why a man like Obama will begin to trace his roots? Going to find out who his father was and become a man like that. Be careful when you are dealing with people that have no father. Be careful when a battle finds you with a woman that has no husband. Look at this. You shall not afflict. If you afflict them in any way and they cry at all to me, God said, when I see their tears, when I see a widow crying because of you, let me tell you, there are things bodyguards cannot protect you from. There are things that a big political office cannot protect you from. You may end a great man, but one day you are children. Because the God we serve does not finish with men as individuals. There are things you do today, it shall never be well with your children. Look at this. If you afflict them in any way and they cry to God because they have no one to cry to, I, I would rather afflict someone that has another human being to cry to. But afflicting people that have no man to cry to, men that you afflict and they pack their bags and they go to the mountain, men that you afflict and you hear them say, we are fasting for 40 days. You are finished. Look at this. In any way, and they cry at all to me, I will surely hear their cry. Look at verse 23, 24. And my wrath will become hot. And when God's wrath becomes hot because of some people, he's not coming to touch. He's not coming to mess up things. When he comes, he comes with caskets. Not Satan, God. And I will kill you. And I will choose for you the kind of death you'll die. I will kill you with a sword. And I will look for your wives. And I will look for your own children. Look at this. Your wives shall be widows. And your children shall be fatherless. Raise your hands. Again and say in the name of Jesus. Lord save me from traps. That can destroy my life. Look at this. They will cry. The thing is, when they cry, when they cry to God, God hears their cry. And when God comes, he comes in a way you will not like. Give me the message translation of verse 22 all the way to verse 24. Lord, if there is a man that is, you are looking forward to help, Help Maurice Olo. I need the help of God. I need men to help me. Lord, I will say thank you. I will say thank you. Look at this. Don't mistreat widows or orphans. How you treat them. If you do and they cry out to me, you can be sure I'll take them most seriously. I will show my anger and come raging among you with a sword. And your wives will end up widows and your children will end up orphans. Protect your wife by the way you handle widows. Protect your husband by the way you handle widows. Protect your children by the way you handle orphans. Tears can kill you. Give me Psalm 56 from verse 8. New King James Version. Dear 
there is a level of gratitude. When men see your tears, I didn't say act them. Sometimes it's all right to cry when you feel like crying. I always wonder how some people can give some testimonies while laughing. <laughs> I wonder how you can be coached to testify. A broken man does not need to force tears. There's a language of tears that God takes very seriously. God didn't say, I will hear their voice. God said, I will see their tears. When I see the tears, I pick the sword. When God saw the tears of David, he decided the destiny of Absalom. There are men that cry with your name and you have decided your destination. You have finished yourself. Lord, help me that I may not finish myself. Now look at this. David said, you number my wine rings. You put my tears in a bottle. He looked at God and he picked a dimension of God. He, he, you know when you walk with God, there are things you begin to pick that men cannot understand. And he could realize that God numbers my wind rings. God puts my tears into your bottle. And they are, are they not in your book? So David saw two things. David saw God with the bottle. And David saw God with the book. And this bottle and this book had no assignment but tears. There's a book of tears. You don't cause men to cry in vain. There's a book of tears. There's a bottle of tears. Why would God pick a bottle of all things? Why would God pick a book of all things? You number how much I've wondered. And the tears I was crying while I was wondering. Then you put my tears into a bottle. Have you not put them in a book? Look at verse number nine. When I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know because God is for me. God is for me. But what has made the enemy stand back is the fact that I can cry. So my tears. Kept them in a bottle. Numbered them in a book. And the enemy stand back. My brother, there are men whose bottles, negative bottles of the tears they have caused satanic books that carry their tears are about to explode. Raise your hands and say, Lord, if there is a man you are thinking of helping, let me be that man. I will be grateful. There's a bottle meant for tears and that bottle is with God. A few things that tears can do. Tears can confine a man. Tears can imprison a man. Tears can keep a man within certain limits. Tears can jail you the rest of your life. Tears can lock you up in a place you can't break away from. Just because someone cried. I know women that cannot marry because of the tears the mother shed. A lady in university, I told you that. The mother was trying to advise her. The mother had five of them with five different men. And she looked at the mother and told the mother, I'm a bit careful. I'm not as careless as you are. Getting five children with five men. And the mother just looked at her and her tears came. I said, you talk to me like that and you're a woman like me. And the mother was weeping. She told the mother, if you like, you can jump up the wall and tell the whole village. And two years later, she had two boys from two different men. Because the tears of the mother rubbished her education. Put her in the same situation where the mother was. There are tears your father cries. And you can't escape ending like him. He has confined you. There are tears your mother who is a widow will cry. And I can tell you, you lose your husband before his time. Because tears can, tears are more than GPRS.
tears dropping in Kenya can confine a man in America. Tears are so, the tears of a man are a supernatural liquid. Raise your hands and say, Lord, all the days of my life, may nobody cry that is not supposed to cry with my name. When robbers broke into our home, in the village in the morning, you'd think someone died. We, those who are wailing, not that we died. They were wailing. People thought someone is dead. They were trying to ask God, how can it happen? The way this man takes care of us, how can it happen? We are not strong. There are things that ought to protect us. When what was intended to protect you is what is fighting you. My brother, a brand new BMW cannot save you. Ah! Some things are never done. Some people must not cry with your name. Avoid things that may make a father cry tears. Avoid them. Tears can confine a man. Your mother had five. Now you have two. Tears can make you misbehave. There's a way your mother cries and you lose all sense of dignity. Lord, may no man cry that ought not to cry with my name. With the name of my wife. With the name of my children. Ladies and gentlemen, the, 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 the tears of a man they are men whose children began to find themselves armed robbers and in jail because someone cried. Tears of a man. Tears of a man. Tears restrain men. They are tears that drop down and the wrath that was to fall on you is suspended. No matter what an old man has done, you are a police officer. When an old man falls in the middle of a riot and you can tell this one meant no harm has been caught up in the middle of this and you had raised your stick. Hold it. Hold it. You know, I prayed a prayer that Lord, never let me carry a grudge. Let me be known only for one thing that I'm pregnant with mercy. Sometimes you wanted to fire a man, you are the big man. And you see the way your fellow man goes down. And tears wash him. If you fear God, tell him we will revisit this. Stand up. When your eyes are too dry, you have no lubricant for where you are going. There are battles in life that are won by tears. There are some things that men do to you. In blessing your life, let the tears flow. I don't know if I'm making sense. If there is a man that you want to help, Lord, let me be that man. Let me be that man. Tears can introduce limitations in people's lives. Tears can restrict you. Tears can place you under a certain governance. Tears can contain you. Tears can govern you. There are men that come close to certain breakthroughs and they can't get it. When they are close, they can't because of what the father said while dying in tears. Someone wept and cried. Said, you do this to me. Wept in the darkness of the night. A man turned over his plate to fast and pray because of what you did. My brother, God is a God of mercy, but there's a way God respects tears. You'll not go free. Have mercy on us. Show us mercy. Mercy, Lord. The tears of a man are not easy to escape. It's impossible. Did you notice 
that bottles don't have handles. When tears have been put in a bottle, it means nobody can handle that man's case. When the tears of good regarding a man's life enters the bottle of the Lord, it becomes a weapon that can kill any man. That's why I want you to gather good tears for your life. Many of you may not understand why we do the things we do. When the tears of men protect you, AK-47 is not a big deal. There are men that cannot die easily because of the bottles that are in the presence of God. The books that have been written about their tears. The tears they have made to fall. What do you think happens when an old man that has gray hair comes to you with a document, a school document, begging you to educate his child? And you say, I don't know if I'll get money, but let me take it. And he falls to the ground crying and rolls his gray hair on the grass and tells you, I have no money to give you except this my gray hair. I didn't buy it with money. I give it to you as a gift. There are things a bullet cannot penetrate. Before you fight a man, find out who is crying on their behalf. Find out who is crying. There is a place men cry calling your name and God keeps you from ever going back in life forever. And there are people who cry with your name. Listen to me, some of you, God will bless you, God will raise you, and God will bring you into associations and organizations where people want to trust you with money. If you are ever trusted with money for the poor, and you say, I have a hundred widows, and they give you money for a hundred widows, and you help ten, and squander money meant for ninety widows, Buy a car, build a house, live a big life. Sikuya karma inakuja. Heri udaiwe pesa, usidaiwe machosi, ya wasiwe jiweza. Never. Tears speak a language that no erudite can correct. Tears write things that the ink bank of the FBI and American Secret Service, they believe they have all inks on earth, but they don't have the ink of tears. You can't find it there. Tears write things that men cannot erase. Only God can handle. I pray for all of you listening to me. May your parents cry tears of joy. I pray for all of you listening. May men and women in life cry tears of joy when they remember your life. May no man cry tears of shame, tears of harassment when they remember you. There's a book meant for tears. The God we serve writes down tears, records tears. Ladies and gentlemen, every tear that falls has information. Every tear that falls is saying something. You understand? You see, I shared some things in my book. The first time I took a car home, my old father, the first time I bought him a bicycle, his tears fell on the bicycle as he unwrapped the bicycle. He said things I will spare you from. Three years later, he was, he was touching a car, second-hand car he bought, and his tears fell on the car again. Listen, there are tears that ensure you will never struggle for some things. And there are tears that ensure the circumstance under which some tears are shed for you is a memory for life. You tricked somebody's son and killed him. You lured somebody's son and because of you the son died. You tricked a man into a relationship 
and made uh, um, arrangements and the man died. When the mother is crying, those tears, young ladies, avoid tears. Those tears. You handle the young man that where he, where he went to sit. The tears that streamed his cheeks said, oh, Mary, you are doing this to me after I've educated you. I borrowed money to pay your school fees. You promised to marry me. You have rejected me. You have left me. I've lost because of you. Enjoy your marriage. God is watching my tears. My brother, my sister, sometimes you want to marry someone, find out the tears that are being cried about them. Sometimes when you are so much in love, you want to marry someone, and people are saying some things. Listen. Don't play a man, he does all that. Then you are about to graduate, you introduce another man to him and say, anyway, whatever you spend, we can pay you. You can't pay the hassle. You can't pay the things he borrowed. You can't pay what he denied his mother to raise you, to pay you a fee. There are things that are not done. You understand? One way that men prove they are grateful is when you see their tears. They say you may have been getting, you, you can get ready to slap your wife. There are tears you see. For those of you who slap your wives, I understand there are people who still slap their wives. You are weak. A man who fights a woman is weak. He's a weakling. The things women go through to bring children. If women were to carry the first baby, then the man carries the second one. Most families will not have more than two children. Because when you go to the labor order and come out, you'll respect your wife. You have to be very weak to slap a woman. Slap your mother. I knew a man who used to send his old mother to go and bring firewood. So one day, I wasn't saved. Maybe God was just, I was a small boy, about 14, 15 years. So the, the old woman, widow, tried to carry the firewood and she fell down. So I carried the firewood for this widow. When I reached her home, her biological son came out with two split firewood. Almost finished me. And the son was telling her, so you have gone to market it outside when I send you for firewood. And he had a wife. He pushed the mother with the firewood. The old woman went down. You know he married. He, he, he had just married. They had a baby girl. That's the only girl they had. From the time that woman died, they buried six children. They get a child, they bury. They get a child, they bury. They get a child, they bury. Till the day this woman got born again. And those who knew told the preacher what happened. And mercy was pleaded. That's when they began to get children. Unfortunately, the man did not live long. Just the same way he pushed his widow mother is the same way his grave opened up. Listen to me. May some people not cry. You are born to wipe away the tears of your mother. You are born to wipe away the tears of your father. You are born that wherever you go, tears will be wiped. And if tears must be shed, let them be tears of joy. Let men cry. For the things you have done for men. There is a way the tears of men express a gratitude that leaves doors open. Tears say thank you. Tears are an expression. I am grateful. You come before a panel. The worst has been said. Sometimes the only language you can use is the language of tears. And say nothing. I hear people say, men don't cry. Men who want to die before their time don't cry. 
You are not stronger than David. He was a man of tears. He said it. Give me the message translation. I begin to wind up. When you are really grateful sometimes, the only way you can express it is your tears. You're thankful. You're grateful to God. You're grateful to men. You show up to go and tell a man thank you and you begin to cry. They say, no, 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 don't cry. He said, you finished me. Thank you. What do you think happens when an old widow is crying? I never knew I could live in a house. Thank you for covering my shame. Over last year, I carried blankets and bedding. Some of those widows sleep in the cold. They were dancing in tears with blankets and beddings. Some of you young girls that are not yet married, which widow are you helping? When a widow prays for you to be married, you can't marry a man that will die tomorrow. Unfortunately, in our generation, we have girls that can tell a widow, no wonder your husband died. We were with mama in a meeting and a certain widow was fighting over something and a man said, I heard the voice, no wonder she lost her husband. Ah! This generation, don't you fear God? A widow is mourning over her son. The clip is placed on Facebook. You go there to correct A single girl that puts her mouth in a failed marriage is like a puppy that is laughing at the parents that are naked. When a puppy begins to laugh at the mother and the father for not wearing pants, she's finished. It is finished. There are things, because they are posted on Facebook, does not mean comment. Don't teach people how to mourn. Madam teacher. Don't teach people how to pain. I watched my father lose his two sons while he was alive. I know the pain. You see, some of you don't know the value of tears because you've never seen your father cry. He was a big man. You were raised in a big family. You've never known luck. So you wonder why people cry. Never judge the pain you've never felt. Never judge it. If you never saw your father being humiliated because of you, don't put your mouth in, into people for what they do for their parents. Shut up. Don't talk because you have a mouth. Talk because what you're about to say will build men. Don't waste your life before your time. Tears are heavy. May your father not cry because of you. May your mother not cry because of you. May a widow not cry because of you. May an old man not cry because of you. May a pastor who is anointed by God that you fell down before, demons left you, you got saved. He once knelt before him. He laid hands on you. Now he's crying because of the things you are saying. May it not be you. I pray it not be you. I pray for me as Maurice or no. Let no man who has ever laid hands on me cry because of me. Raise your hands and say, help me, Lord. I didn't hear you. Shout again, help me, Lord. Raise your hands again and say, Lord, give me mercy. Give my children mercy. Give my generation mercy. Give me tears of thanksgiving. Give me tears of thanksgiving. There are tears. There's a way you show up. And when your tears are seen, is your gratitude. Don't be too big to cry. Don't be too big to weep. 
Don't be too blessed. Don't wear a shirt you cannot weep on. Don't wear a suit you cannot weep on. Because tears are the language of God. I, I wind up. You have kept track of, of my every toss and turn through the sleepless nights. Each tear entered into your ledger. Each ache written in your book. Nine. If my enemies run away, turn tail when I yell at them, then I'll know that God is on my side. Good news translation. Kaliri Ziba. Long life is something you'll never pray for. The way you live your life. I see many of you. I will preach to you when I'm gray-headed. And you're gray-headed. I will dedicate your children. I will dedicate your grandchildren to God and to the ministry. Because you live long. They are keys of long life. Tears is one of them. When the widows, when, when God saw the tears of the widows, death could not hold Orcas. The widows were weeping. There are tears that can call helpers for you from Zanzibar, from wherever. There are men that keep crying about you for good. And the help will look for you from every corner. And there are men that cry about you. You are finished. He said, you know how troubled I am. You have kept a record of my tears. Aren't they listed in your book? <laughs> the day I call to you, my enemies will be turned back. I know this. God is on my side. Can I say this in closing? There are doors your tears can open. There are impending dangers that your tears can stop. There are things that were about to happen to you. That your tears, heaven can see your tears and stop the dangers. You never hurt men for free. There's no pain you cause that is for free. There's no door you bang that heaven doesn't record. May those who helped you not be repeating it in pain. That, hey, whose V8 is that? So and so son. One time I almost died trying to help this boy. Is it him that can now bypass me like that? Oh! And a man sheds tears. I said it one day. When your V8 is tearing your village road and you see an old man running with his walking stick getting out of the road. Slow down. Stop. Come out. Papa, how are you? I'm so and so. Where are you going? Because you don't know that old man. What you are seeing could be the prophecy of what you'll become when your V8 is gone. There is a way a man carries out himself in his village. There is a way you behave when you go back where you used to be. When you are at the airport headed for further studies, don't mock your villagers on Facebook. Because they'll be there to welcome you when you come back. Life takes men back where they came from. Never forget that. The way to go back in peace is how you handle men when God lifted you. The day I call to you, my enemies will be turned back. I know this. God is on my side. God is on my side. God is on my side. The Lord whose promises I praise. Tears can stop danger. And tears can provoke danger. Tears can express gratitude. There's a way you weep on the altar of the Lord. Hannah wept on the altar of the Lord. And Samuel was the result. She wept in anguish. I pray that may God keep you. May God protect you. Raise your hands and say, I will be grateful. I am grateful. Lord, I am grateful. For everything that has been done 
for me, I am grateful. For all that has been done for me, I am grateful. Father, I am grateful. If any man cried, calling my name, and I wasn't aware, mercy, oh God, give me another chance to make things straight. And if I've blessed you, you are a part of King's Gathering Church, take your prophetic offerings, take your givings to God, and the number is right there. And next week, tomorrow morning, we begin with our intercession. Is our week three of fasting and prayer. Wherever you are, it was not yet over. We are continuing. We've just finished week number two. We're getting to week number three. We go all the way. We have more one, one more week ahead there. And before we close, lunch hours run from tomorrow. Be part of it. Be part of boot camp intercession. 6 a.m. to 9 tomorrow morning. Pray. Seek God. Let God see your tears. Tears go where you cannot go. Be there to pray. Be there to seek God. And let's wait on God.